This video is sponsored by Screenbox. For a number of years, I've been familiar with the observation that the quality of programmers is a decreasing function of the density of the go-to statements in the programs they produce. This was the beginning of one of the most inflammatory papers in the history of computer science. And in one paragraph, Dijkstra brought to the forefront of the software world a problem that was before only being discussed behind doors. The question of whether the go-to statement is more detrimental than it is helpful in the production of good and correct software. This is the history of the infamous go-to statement. Welcome to DevTools Made Simple. In his letter to the communications of the ACM, Dijkstra voiced his unhappiness with the direction of programming in the 1960s, a period where the industry witnessed the beginning of its now familiar rapid growth mixed with the widespread use of poor programming practices to meet deadlines. The careless use of global variables and the lack of concern for coupling and encapsulation were commonplace, and this was a recipe for disaster. The industry was very young, and a lot of the now common good practices weren't invented yet. So Dijkstra set out to fix things by putting pen to paper, and... In 1968, Dijkstra wrote a, a letter to the editors of one of the famous magazines at the time, and he said that GoTo was considered harmful. It was a very famous note, and it, it kind of caused an uproar in the, in, in the software community, because it, during those days, GoTo was how we got things done. We used GoTo for everything. We had if statements that would have GoTo's in them. We didn't have languages that had while loops in them. We would just use GoTo's all over the place. Anybody here remember Fortran? The GoTo statement has been a subject of heated debate for decades now. While some developers find it evil, like Dijkstra, a world renowned computer scientist who also solved the shortest path problem, others find it useful and won't shy away from it, despite what the majority may say. Today, there are still widely used high-level programming languages like C++ and Go that support go-to's or go-to-like constructs. But the thought of using it brings to many developers the same reaction as that of a code smell. Because to many, the mere presence of a single go-to in the code base is already problematic. Too inconsequential to notice, yes, but to them, it's the beginning of the end. The moment where developers stop caring about code clarity and readability and the code base descends into chaos. To these developers, one go-to opens doors to two go-to's and then three and before we notice it, the code base is littered with go-to's, and no one can understand anything. Java, the famous OO language, in many ways reflects this split feeling in the software community by supporting the go-to while not allowing the developer to use it. It's believed that the language designers reserve the freedom to edit, in case they later found it reasonable to do so. So just like a celebrity that fades into obscurity with time, the appeal of the go-to statement too dwindled over the decades, and in some sense because of Dijkstra. And the questions here are why and how. But first, how did the go-to statement even come to be? While not the first programming language, nor the first high-level programming language, Fortran was the first widely used language and the first to explicitly include the go-to statement as you think of it now. The go-to statement was one of Fortran's core mechanisms for control flow. It allowed developers to jump unconditionally to a label statement and do what we call a one-way jump as opposed to the two-way jump of a function which eventually returns to the point of the call. Here's an example of Fortran code that makes use of the go-to statement. The go-to statement made different kinds of looping possible, given that the language only supported but a limited do loop that iterated over a range. So it's easy to see the appeal of the unconditional jump and how convenient it can be in the development process, much like how the use of God classes is convenient until it becomes a nightmare to manage. So in 1957, Fortran is created and the go-to statement introduced with it. And just 10 years later, in 1967, Dijkstra sends an incendiary letter to the ACM. Keep in mind that within the decade, multiple languages containing the go-to statement were created, such as Algol, Cobol, Basic, PL1, and similar. And as early as 1966, there were early voices that tried to raise awareness, like the computer scientist Heinz Zemanek, who discussed about the harmful effects of unstructured control flow. So by no means was Dijkstra the first to talk about it. His contribution was in presenting a formal critique of the go-to statement, and with it, it helped spread the message to a wider audience, while labeling those programmers who did use the go-to as inferior. This is why Dijkstra's name was and has been linked with the go-to controversy.
Okay, but what's so bad about the go-to statement? Here's why you should avoid the go-to statement according to Dijkstra. In the letter go-to statement considered harmful, Dijkstra brings the following as the reason for abolishing the go-to statement from all higher-level programming languages. The reliability of a program is not only dependent on the developer's ability to write it, but also in their ability to understand it. It says that because human intellect is adapted to static relations, not dynamic evolving processes, we should aim to write code that is easy to follow and to keep track of. The go-to and its ability to change the flow of execution to random places makes more room for spaghetti code, which makes it more difficult to keep track of the progress of their underlying process. In simple terms, it makes it more difficult to trace back the series of steps that led the program to a specific state or line of code, because it could have technically come from anywhere. This is in some sense also the reason why multi-threading can be so challenging. It's often said in the software community that state is the problem. But the real issue is changing state that is also complex. Keeping track of one variable may be relatively easy, but the same can't be said about 5 or 10. While tracking one animal is doable, tracking two or more at the same time quickly becomes infeasible. And this idea has been expressed in other ways in other fields, like in psychology, where it's known that the human brain can only handle or remember or hold about 7 plus or minus 2 bits of information. While the dream programmer is one who can achieve the impossible all day, every day and for as long as needed, reality is far more disappointing. And this is what Dijkstra tries to have us understand. It is biology, not a moral failure from the part of the developers, the reason why sometimes a series of unfolding processes would give rise to escape or comprehension. Unlike computers, there's a point early on where the human brain fails to handle complexity well. And the solution lies not in wishing or pretending that things were not the way they are, but in acknowledging our limitations and write code in such a way that it allows us to produce working software that is also easy to understand, which will in turn lead to the production of higher quality software. So what was response to Dijkstra's claim? Like many issues in the industry, the responses ranged from agreement with his go-to paper influencing Nicholas Wirth and his programming language Pascal, to disagreement like Donald Nuth and his structured programming paper Structured Programming with Go-To Statements, who argued that there were some instances in which the go-to, contrary to Dijkstra's assertion, could indeed lead to cleaner code. But despite the mixed sentiment, the overall feeling in the industry was one of agreement, which only kept growing over time, so much so that today what was once a standard coding practice or construct present in nearly 100% of the code bases now is resorted to the begrudging use in a fraction of code bases with the majority not having a single go-to statement despite how convenient it may be. But as this sentiment warrant, as Gustavo Duarte mentioned in his go-to and the folly of dogma post, the go-to statement like everything else is just a tool and no tool is universal. And just because the tool is mostly problematic, doesn't mean it should be completely abolished. And the go-to controversy has been taken to the level of a dogma. So we end with his final words. Every programmer pays lip service to simplicity. But when push comes to shove, most will readily give up simplicity to satisfy dogma. We should be willing to break generic rules when the circumstances call for it. Keep it simple. Minimizing the use of GoTo is not the only good programming practice. Whether junior or senior in your career, you can learn how to write better code today from this free introduction to clean code course available on Screenbo. And you can improve your career by taking the other free and paid courses on subjects like AI, React, UI design, and more. Scrim is an exciting new platform for developers in all stages of their careers. And in addition to their vast library of courses, you can also avoid the common tutorial hell by using their projects in Playground as a tool to put the lessons to practice. Check the link in the description for a 20% discount on premium courses.